Hey, listen, we're so excited. Pastor Charlie here with the Now Church. I need you to like, subscribe, share, let somebody know service is about to start and you need to be at nowchurchfl.com. We love you. Make sure that you let somebody know. What I want you to do right now, matter of fact, go ahead and copy the link, text it out to five people and let them know you're about to have a power pack service. Now is the time to get on. Pastor Charlie, nowchurchfl.com is where you can find us. I love you. I look forward to... Oh, look, we started service right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good evening, good evening. I'm Elder Ives. I'm glad you're able to join us on our midweek service, wherein God has been really blessing us in this now season in the year of the takeover. So our prayer tonight is that you would you would grab something out of the word of God and God will richly and truly bless you. But before we begin, I want you to do two things. Hit that like and that share button if you're on YouTube or Facebook and share this post. Uh, share what God is doing in the year of the now um, the year of the takeover and this great ministry of the now church. But as we start, we want to first do our, our, our declaration. And it says, now is my time for healing, favor and blessings and freedom. I am now anointed, appointed and qualified. I have now faith, endurance, acceptance and strength. I have divine wealth, prosperity and a legacy. Now I'm empowered victorious and triumphant. Now I walk in exceedingly abundant joy, peace, love, in Jesus' name. Amen. And we love to do that every time because life and death is in the power of a tongue. So what we really like, to, we like to speak life, speak blessings and prosperities over our prosperity over our, ourselves each and every time that we get a chance. And first I want to thank Pastor Javen want to celebrate Pastor Javen, uh, who is our lead pastor at the Now Church and, 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 and all that God is doing in this season. So we want to just go ahead and get in right into our teaching for tonight. And our teaching comes from the text of the scripture, 1 Kings, the third chapter and the seventh verse. And it says, and now, O Lord, my God, that has, thou has made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. Thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor multiplied. Give thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge these so great people? As a teaching subject and topic tonight, our topic is going to be understanding discernment. Understanding discernment and what discernment is and why we need to have the gift. Watch this. The gift of discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge well or perceive accurately, often involving keen insight, intuition, or wisdom. It is the ability to discern, discern well, and watch this, and to perceive accurately. That's why we need to ask God for this gift, the ability to discern of things that are going on in our lives. And I believe that there's two different ways, uh, two different uh, uh, types of discernment. One is the gift of discernment, and the other one is wisdom that comes through knowledge, the proper application of knowledge, which is wisdom. And that way we're able to discern things that go on in our life and we're able to do it accurately. And I believe that we walk in the gift and understand discernment, it would keep us from making a, a, a bad decisions because we're able to accurately make those choices through the gift of discernment. And in this text, 
uh, um, what's going on, just to give you a, a kind of a backdrop, uh, King Solomon's father, David, had just passed. So around about this time, Solomon might have been maybe, I would say, 14, 15, or 16 years old. So what he did was, now watch this. In the text, you notice that Solomon didn't go to the priest. Solomon went directly to God, and he asked God. He said, he said, watch this. He said, for I am a little child. I don't know whether I'm going out or whether to come in. So therefore, he said, God, I don't know what to do. You've given me this great multitude of people, and I don't know how to judge them. So what, what Solomon was, King Solomon was asking God is to give me the gift of wisdom and knowledge to discern and judge matters that was going on in Israel. And watch this. Shortly after that, when God granted him this gift, God said, because you did not ask me for riches, what I am going to do, I'm going to bless you above all because you asked me for wisdom, which was the gift or the spirit of discernment. And shortly after that, if you stick with the text and you read further down in first King, the third chapter, you will find out there was, there was a story and, and what happened, there, there were two women, and the Bible calls them or portrays them as women of the night. And in this story, two women had two little children. And one lady, she went to sleep that night, and she slept on her child, and the child died. So when she woke up and found that her child was no longer living, what she did is she swapped the babies. And she put her dead baby with the other lady. So when the lady wakes up, she sees that her baby is dead, but she noticed it's not her child. So they get into a quarrel and they say, well, I tell you what, let's take this matter to King Solomon. King Solomon then received both women in. And, and this was the first instance where he was able to use the gift of discernment or wisdom. So King Solomon says, I tell you what I'll do. Give me a sword. Give me a sword, and what I'll do is I'll cut the baby in half, and I'll give each one of you half of the baby. The one lady cried out, saying, No, king, don't bring any harm to the baby. What we want you to, what I want you to do is to give the baby to her. At that particular point, King Solomon knew that the real mother had spoken because she would rather let the baby live talking about a mother's love, she would rather let the baby live than for the baby to be harmed. So King Solomon says, and because of this, you are the mother of this child. So that is one of the great instances wherein God allowed, uh, King Solomon allowed the gift of discernment or the ability to discern to really start to move in his life. Why do we need the gift of discernment, the spirit of discernment, the gift of discernment? It, because it helps us to make accurate decisions in our lives. And I believe that once we become believers, once you become believers and you receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth because he's now the spirit of truth. Jesus was talking to his, his, his disciples, I believe it's in, um, uh, it's in the book of John, John 14. And he was talking, he said, oh, I go away, but I'm going to leave you the comforter. And he said, not only is he's going to be the comforter, he will be called the spirit of truth. John 14 and 17 says, even the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive it, see if not him, neither know uh, uh, neither know him, but it says, but the spirit of truth shall dwell in you. I'm kind of paraphrasing that, but go back and read it. So God is, Jesus is saying, so the world will not receive the spirit of truth, but therefore you will receive the spirit of truth. And after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And I believe that in the scripture, when, when, when Jesus was going to the Samaria, and uh, he was passing through Samaria and he met the woman, the Samarian woman at the well. 
I believe when he had that, inter, that, that encounter with her, he was able to use discernment because he said, you know, you know well, well, what about my husband? He said, well, you know, you've already had five husbands and the one that you have now is not even yours. So Jesus was using then the, the word of knowledge and also the discernment to understand that what was really going on in her life. And I believe that when we walk in the gift of discernment, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter and the 10th verse says, but God has received them unto, uh, unto us by his spirit. Watch this. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So if we want to know the deep things of God and how to discern different things in our lives, it's best that we walk in discernment if we walk in truth. Amen. And it says here further down, it says, but the natural man receiveth not the spiritual things of God for yea, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the Holy Spirit is the teacher and, can, and he compares spiritual things with spiritual things. So what the spirit of discernment, the gift of discernment, the gift of discernment gives us an insight of, of what, what decisions that we should make. A lot of times when we get to uh, uh, even business decisions and how we should invest and what we should do, uh, the scripture says, trust in the Lord in all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. But watch this. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will direct our path. So when we ask God to say, okay, God, I need to discern, should I invest or should I take on this business? And I really believe that the Holy Spirit will guide us in making those decisions. Amen. Matthew, the seventh chapter, talks about entering to the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and every and many there be which go go thither because the straight gate and narrow, straight is the gate and narrow is the way narrow is the way that leadeth to life and further down it says beware of false prophets which come in sheep clothing. False prophets that come in sheep clothing. There used to be a saying a long time ago, yes, you look like a sheep, you talk like a sheep, but you're making wolf tracks. And I believe that when we walk in discernment and the gift of discernment, what God does is we then have the ability to understand truth and whether or not we're not being led uh, uh, by false prophets or false teachings. I believe there was a story as I close. There was a story in Acts, I believe it was Acts the fourth or the fifth chapter, wherein in the fourth chapter, they had, they had land, they had homes, they had houses, and they sold all, and they brought it at the feet of Peter. The scripture says, and they, demi they divided amongst each other so that none would lack. Amen? But here comes, in the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, here comes Ananias and Sapphira. And they said they sold the property for a certain amount. Discernment hit Peter and Peter asked him, why have you lied? And he said, you didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Spirit. And we know how the story goes. His wife came in, she died. Husband came in, 
he died and they took them out. But Peter was able to use the gift of discernment to know whether or not they're being there. He was being told the truth. And I really believe that when we walk in this gift of discernment, that we would be able to understand and know when people are talking to us. Have you ever been in a situation and you're hearing a person talk and it's just something on the inside says, no, that's not true. No, that doesn't sound right. What's happening is, is the Holy Spirit is now revealing truth to you. And even though you might not know exactly what is being said, but there's a feeling on the inside that says what you're saying to me doesn't really sound right. And it's like there's an itching. There's a something that comes up in your spirit that will not allow you to believe it. So I believe that as believers, we need to understand discernment and discernment, spiritual discernment will keep us from making catastrophic mistakes in our lives. It will tell you and watch this. If you're dating, ask God to discern for discernment, whether or not this is the person I should be with. Or if you're getting ready to get married, you know what I'm saying? God, is this the person that you want for me to be with? And when Holy Spirit speaks to us, we should be obedient enough to heed to the voice of God. Obedient enough to heed to the voice of God. And lastly, we should study the word of God because Hebrews, the fourth chapter, says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents, intents of the heart. So, so we use the word of God as a two-edged sword. And he's able, the word through us is able to discern different matters that we are faced with on a day-to-day -day basis. So my prayer is that we ask God, God, give me the gift or the understanding of discernment that I'm able to walk in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to make these different decisions in our lives. So if we're going to walk in the year of takeover, the Holy Spirit is going to tell us what to do, how to do, and when to do it. So our prayer tonight is God give us the gift of discernment that we're able to make wise choices in our lives. And as we close, we just want to pray for a second. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity just for us to come together and to share your word. We know with God that your word is powerful. Your word is sharp. Your word is operative. And we pray, Father, that we're able to receive this word and that it would grow. This seed of the word of God will grow in us and that we're able to walk in this gift of discernment to walk out the days of our lives in prosperity. This we bless you in Jesus name. God bless you and we love you. Wasn't that just a powerful message? I know that myself, I'm taking something home with me for that for sure and applying that this very week. If you didn't get a chance to, make sure that you uh, give your tithes and offerings. The information is right here. And then also make sure that you comment and subscribe. We are at Now Church FL across all social media. Look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>